I finally got in the Makeup by Mario items that I purchased off of Sephora, so I thought I would go ahead and do a dedicated video to the items that I did purchase. I picked up quite a few items in anticipation of filming a dedicated video for it, so <laughs> hopefully it's still relevant by now. I purchased all three of the palettes, one of the brushes, a mixing medium, and a highlighter, and I did do a demo with those products, which will be towards the end of the video if you're interested in seeing that, and that is actually the look that's on my face as well. This first item is the Master Crystal Reflector Highlighter, and I believe there are three shades available in this. I got the shade in quartz, which is the white kind of silver one. And it comes in a little square compact, which is actually smaller than I thought it was gonna be. And there's 0.12 ounces of product or three and a half grams in here. So this is what it looks like right here. It's very reflective. This is not a standalone highlighter for me. It's very much a topper product because there isn't a lot of filler pigment to it. It's very um, sparkle with no kind of base to it. Um, it does have that slight putty texture to to it which kind of feels creamy which makes it a little bit more difficult to pick up on a brush and then when I do use it with a brush it kind of disperses the product kind of sitting on my skin so how I like to use products like this is with my finger and I just kind of get some on my finger like that and what I like to do is really press it kind of into the skin there to get it to kind of go into the skin as opposed to sitting on top of it because like if you do use a brush you can get it on top and then it'll just kind of wipe off your face another way to kind of make it stand out a little bit more is to use it on maybe an unset uh, foundation but i like to use my products over a powdered face so that's how i've been using it so with that being said this is kind of for me the same exact product as the fenty diamond balm in how many carrots which this product i really love i feel like the fenty one is ever so slightly more creamy than the Makeup by Mario one, but they have the same type of effect on the skin. So you can see that I've used this one quite a bit, and I use this one the same way that I have been using this one, and I like to use it with a finger and kind of press it into the skin. So I'm gonna swatch the two together. I'm gonna kind of push on it so you can see that it's got, you know, a little bit of that putty type of a texture to it. So we'll swatch this guy right here. So you can see it's very transparent there because there isn't really any filler pigment in there. And that's what it looks like on the skin swatched. And then I'll swatch the Fenty one as well. And the Fenty one comes with eight grams or 0.28 ounces of product. So you're getting significantly more product in the Fenty one compared to the Makeup by Mario. And again, I do feel like the Fenty one's got a little bit more of a creaminess factor to it, so it sticks on the skin a little bit easier than the Makeup by Mario one. So there's the Makeup by Mario Quartz, and then there is the Fenty How Many Carrots right there. It's like the same thing. <laughs> and then I did purchase one of his brushes. I got the EF2 Cosmetic Brush. Um, all of his stuff comes in this kind of matte black packaging with the white makeup by Mario on it. So this is the brush that I got and I got this to use actually with the highlighter. It looked too big to be an eyeshadow brush and now that I have it, it, it is for what I like to use for eye brushes. So it's good for kind of a more precise highlight. So this is the brush that I used when I used the brush with this product and I just kind of got some on there and dusted it on the skin. Again, when I use a brush, this product really sits on the top of the skin on a set face. It is a synthetic brush and it doesn't have a lot of weight to it. It's very light, if you will. Um, and one thing that I do like about it is the bristles on this one, while even being synthetic, they have a little bit of texture to them. So they're gonna pick up product a little bit better than some of those synthetics that are like really, really smooth and like silky feeling. So when I'm using a synthetic brush, I do prefer the ones that have kind of this textured bristle to it. So that one there is the EF2 brush. I also got the Master Metal Manipulator Mixing Liquid, and this has got a half a fluid ounce of product. And the description made me wanna try it with the water activated hydro liners. I've got a bunch from Suva, and I've got some from some other brands as well, but the water activated kind of eyeliners, um, just to try to make them more waterproof. I've been looking for something that mixes well with these that makes them more transfer and waterproof. Some mixing mediums that I've tried won't even mix with the product, and then the ones that do mix with the product don't like waterproof them at all. So I'm still kind of on the hunt, and that's kind of the main reason why I bought this product. And it says this pro mixing liquid liquid transforms the metallic pigments into long-lasting molten metal eyeshadows and liners to create 
editorial effects. So I liked that um, long lasting aspect of this product. It does come with a little spatula because it's intended to use with the eyeshadows and the metal ones in particular to scrape some off, mix it in there and get that more foiled look. I have used it like that and I do feel like it gives a little bit more of a foiled effect because again, it is a liquid with those products. But with my uh, more tacky eyeshadow base, I don't feel like the added shine is significant enough to go through that extra step, if that makes any sense. And that's one of the palettes I'll show you here in a minute as well. But so far, mixed in with the Suva liner, I haven't had any flaking or transferring of the liner. One of the biggest things that happens is I'll get a little bit of the liner on my lashes like when I'm putting it on and I go over it with mascara but somehow that liner still transfers to my lower lash line and I'll have like a pretty substantial amount of that liner underneath my uh, lower lash line there. So I'll put an annotation down below for how it wears throughout the day because this is the first day I've actually used this like that. And I have had this liner on for about four hours and so far so good. I'm really hopeful for this product and it mixes in with the liner really well too. So I'm excited about this guy and it comes with a little spatula there for scraping the shadow. Now let's go ahead and get into the palettes. Again, I purchased all three of them. So I'll start off with the Master Metals palette which is the one that I was the most excited about. And this is the one that has the five foiled shades in there. Each one has got 0 0.05 ounces of product, which is a pretty decent amount. And these are actually baked jelly eyeshadows, which I love. <laughs> Sometimes they can be a little bit difficult to pick up on a brush, so be sure to use something a little more firm. But this is the palette that was intended to be kind of be used with that mixing medium. And then there's the little spatula, and I've been keeping it in here, even though I only scraped off a bit of this shadow one time. Um, I've just been putting it in there. And then the tray actually comes out of this palette as well. So if you do end up using them like that, you can take it out and wash it. The packaging is just a white plastic packaging, nothing super special about it. And then there's a mirror in there. But here are your five shades. You've got silver, gold, copper, bronze, and rose gold. So like the metals, right? I do feel like the silver shade pulls more of a blue. I think it looks blue on and I think it looks blue in the pan. It's like an icy blue shade, um, but it's very pretty. I've been enjoying using this shade um, kind of how I've got it on my eyes today. I think it looks really stunning with the other shadows in the range. Real quick, let me tell you where all this stuff is made. The brush is made in China. The master metal manipulator, so the mixing liquid, is made in the USA. The highlighter in quartz is made in Italy. And then this master metals palette is also made in Italy. But let me go ahead and give you guys some swatches of this. And again, I use kind of a tacky hydrating primer. It's a, a CoverGirl foundation. Um, for an eyeshadow primer and I feel like that product yields a very foiled effect in itself without having to use that mixing medium. Um, the mixing medium does add a little bit more of a foiled effect but again not enough for me to go through the extra step of like scraping on the eyeshadows and stuff like that. So I really like these just using them by themselves directly over primer. Ooh. They're very pretty and I love baked jelly eyeshadows which is what these are. Very pretty. I've got this guy in the center and outer portion of the lid. And then this rose gold one. So because they are that baked jelly formula, I like to use a flat shader and kind of really grind my brush in there to pick up that product. And they go on really nice for me used like that. So really happy with this guy. And again, that's the Master Metals eyeshadow palette. Whoa. This next palette is the Master Metallics, and this is a 12 pan eyeshadow palette, and each shade in here is 0 0.03 ounces per shade, which is a little bit smaller in terms of the amount of product that you're getting per shade, in my opinion. And this palette is actually made in Italy, right here. So the way that I feel about this guy, very beautiful shades. I've got this shade right here on the inner portion of my eye. These are that kind of squishier type of formula as well. Like the best way to describe it is if you're familiar with the ColourPop Super Shock formula, they're like a more powdered down version of that formula. So there's still like that cream 
kind of aspect to it or that putty type of aspect, but it's not quite as creamy as the Super Shock in my opinion. Um, they have really nice pigmentation to them. I find that I have to grind that brush in there to pick that product up again because they have that squishier texture and they do pat on a little bit easier with a finger, but I do prefer using a brush with eyeshadows. And the shades in here are really beautiful as well, but if I could, I would change all of these into baked jelly eyeshadows. <laughs> just like the um, the metals palette that I just showed you guys, like I wish all of these were like those. <laughs> I just would prefer it that way, but I still like the palette and the shades are pretty, but they, you know, they have this going on type of deal, the little squish situation. So let's go ahead and swatch these. So you can see there's quite a bit of a dent in like some of these ones I've used a couple times because I do have to work that brush in there to get them to pick up. And they pick up on your finger a bit easier as you can see right here. But pretty shades though. So those are the first four. And then this last row. So some really pretty colors. They're all shimmers. Right there. So that one is the Master Metallics eyeshadow palette right there. Get them all in here for you guys. And then this last palette is the Master Mattes eyeshadow palette and there are 12 shades in here that are also 0 0.03 ounces per shade. This palette is made in the USA. And every single shade in here is a matte eyeshadow. Now what I found with this formulation was kind of interesting. Like when I first used it, I, I was kind of going into the palette a little bit more to pick up product. But I kind of discovered that it's a, a really buildable formula. It blends out really well and they do have pigmentation, but for those who want a really light application, it's very easy to pick up the product and not kind of overdo it and really get a wash of color which ends up being very pretty so it's a very like it's pigmented but very buildable and very blendable which is nice i've really enjoyed using this palette i had just noticed that i was going into the pans a little bit more to build up color but a lot of people do like that building aspect of eyeshadows so that's kind of a nice uh, little feature of this guy i love that there's you know light mattes medium mattes and deep mattes i've been able to get some super like cool looks out of here and some warm looks I find that this palette pairs with the other two palettes are really really well so I'm happy with this guy I do get a little teeny tiny bit of fallout with some of the deeper shades probably with the lighter shades too but I don't notice them as much because it's like they match my skin tone <laughs> but it's very very small amount so you can almost see even in the swatches there's a little bit of a like a sheerness to these. And I don't mean sheer like in a bad way, but in like more of a buildable way. So let me pick up a little bit more of this color here and show you like kind of how they build. They build really nicely. They also blend really nicely. There are the next four. And then we've got this last row. Very, very smooth shadows. Just really, really nice formula. I enjoy using it every time I grab for it. It was just something to kind of get used to because I didn't get that pow of pigment right away, but it built up so nicely to like the perfect, like desired intensity. Yeah, those are the right words I think <laughs> but those are the shades right there of the master mattes eyeshadow palette the way that I've really been enjoying to use those eyeshadow palettes is kind of all together. I think I forgot to mention, I purchased all of these products off of the Sephora.com website and currently that's the only place that I've seen them available. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Now, if you're interested in seeing the look that's on my face and how these products perform for me, you can hang tight and we will get into it right now. I'm 
I'm going to start off by using the Master Crystal Reflector in the shade Quartz, which is the white kind of silvery one. And I'm going to take the EF2 brush that I got and use that first, just so you can see how it applies on the cheeks with a brush. And then afterwards, I have got a Dior highlighter on already because this is just not a standalone highlighter for me. But I'm going to show you the sparkle it gives over the top with a brush. And then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to pick some up like that. And then I'm going to kind of push it into the skin like that. And then to get started with the eyes, I'm going to take the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Foundation. This is 200 Fair Ivory. This is the um, eye primer I've been using for quite some time. It's got SPF in there and also has some hydration for my drier lid type. And it has a, like, a tacky base to help the shadow um, adhere really well with my drier uh, lid type. So I love using this for an eyeshadow primer. And this is just a Hakuhodo Sephora brush that I'm tapping it on with. Then using a Sonia G Builder 3 brush, which is a flat shader, I'm going to go into this shade right here, which is called the Metallics number no. 5, I think. It's just like numbered. Um, but it's like a pink shiny one. I'm going to put that on the inner portion of the lid. And bring it up past my crease. Kind of just like that. I'm going to flip over that same brush and I'm going to go into the Master Metals palette and use the shade Silver, which is the one that actually has the blue hint to it. I don't feel that's a true silver. It definitely has a blue hue to it. And I'm going to put that over the remaining part of the lid and bring it, I'm going to bring it up kind of in the center part right here um, to help it show a little bit better with my hooded eyelid. And then just flip that brush over and blend the two together. Then using a Chikahota GSN 9 brush, I'm going to go into the Master Mattes palette. And I'm going to pick up this shade right here. And I'm going to mix it in with this shade right here, which are both kind of cooler toned browns. Just kind of dip back and forth between the two shades. And I'm going to put that guy through the crease, kind of angled up towards the tail of my brow. Like I angle it at the very edge of my lash line right here and then towards the tail of my brow that just really pushes back and helps um, with that heavier hooded lid that I have to kind of give me an eye lift. I do have just a teeny bit of fallout there. Then using a Sonia G Mini Booster Brush, I'm going to go into Matte 5, which is this kind of more yellow-toned, mid-tone brown. And I'm going to blend out that deeper brown we put down. I'm going to go back in with that GSN 9 and just kind of buff between the two here. Then using an Isom G29 brush, I'm going to go back and forth between these two shades right here for an underneath the brow bone highlight. Then I'm going to use that Sonia G brush again and I'm going to use the matte number two shade, which is this guy right here. And I'm just going to help further blend this right here into that highlight shade. I don't like to spend a lot of time like with my brushes on my skin like going like this. So this is the, I don't know, the kind of the quickest and easiest way that I found to do it. I kind of place it like paint and then kind of blend it together. <laughs> and then I'll just run through that Eason brush without picking up any more product through here just to be sure it's nice and blended. So there's the shadow done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eye makeup and I will be right back to put on some lips for you guys. For lips, I've got a new lippy pencil from ColourPop and I really enjoy the lippy pencils from them. And this is in the shade Cool BFF. It came out with their latest taupe collection and these are some really pretty shades. So I'm going to go ahead and line my lips with this guy.
it's like it's like the prettiest contour for a lip pencil and then to fill them in i've got max creme de nude lipstick i just got this believe it or not i've never owned creme de nude and it has such a following <laughs> so i'm just gonna fill in my lips with this guy i've never worn it before either so this is a first here and i feel like oh my gosh i feel like that lippy pencil with this nude is like it's so pretty That is definitely a nude. And there is the overall finished look using the products that I purchased from the new Makeup by Mario collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys later. Bye.